2016 was full of vaccine shortages, trying to avoid mosquito bites with serious consequences and fears of security breaches at the nation's hospitals, as well as a special call particularly to the macho men out there. Here's Marie Hull with a look back at 2016's impact on the health sector. If you were looking to travel from Trinidad and Tobago to countries in the Caribbean, Latin America, Africa, or Asia, you may have run into some difficulties if you weren't vaccinated for the yellow fever virus. This as an outbreak was detected in early January. For those seeking vaccination right here at home, reports of a limited supply of the yellow fever vaccine led to an uproar from citizens. An outright buff from Health Minister Terence de Alting was an attempt to set the record straight, as he denied claims of an alleged shortage. Instead, the minister called on persons to clean up their rooms and search their houses for their immunization cards. This as a booster dose or revaccination for the yellow fever would not longer be required. Other shortage claims came from lack of insulin to cancer drugs. But the real pinch, or rather sting for 2016, was the Zika virus. In February, the World Health Organization declared Zika a global emergency that required an urgent and united response. This country was already one step ahead, taking from in front, declaring the virus a public health emergency a week earlier. This virus was first said to be caused by the Aedes aegypti mosquito, the same vector known for being the carrier of the yellow fever, dengue, and chikungunya virus. The Zika virus was said to display flu-like symptoms like mild fever, conjunctivitis, and headaches, or no sign at all. But after months of research, it was discovered that this virus could be linked to microcephaly and the Guillain-Barre syndrome. Panic over the microcephaly came as it stops babies' brains from growing, causing abnormally small heads. By mid-February, Trinidad declared its first confirmed case of the Zika virus, dubbing the Caribbean Public Health Agency the only official agency to test for Zika, given top priority to at-risk groups. Many citizens self-diagnosed. It's not the flu, so I mean, I had Chick V and I didn't have to go to the doctor for that. I knew it was Chick V. I had these severe symptoms and whatever, so um, I don't know if the health clinics can ha handle everyone arriving at their doors to get tested. But the real shocker came when the first confirmed case in a pregnant woman came. The question of if abortion in this country should be legal came forward. The law for that makes abortion illegal has not changed. It remains the same. Private practitioners are free to do as they have always been free to do. But the president of the Gynecological and Obstetrical Society of Trinidad and Tobago, Professor Samuel Ramsarak, said he had no evidence to suggest that doctors were being asked to terminate pregnancy of women who had contracted Zika. But he said that doesn't mean women aren't finding other options. You must be advised as to what the risks are and understanding that there is a... Um, uh, a difficulty to procure um, an abortion in this country. It doesn't mean that somebody cannot go to another island and have a, have a, an abortion. It doesn't it doesn't um, rule that out, you know, because there are islands very close to Trinidad where abortions are illegal. We also learned that the Zika virus could be transmitted through sex, meaning that the virus could live up to six months in the male sperm. By the end of this year, there was one confirmed case of a baby being born in Trinidad with microcephaly, and one case still being under investigation as a result of the Zika virus. This also pushed the call on citizens to be proactive against the spread of the disease and keeping their surroundings clean. This led to an increase in fines for unkept properties from $500 to $3,500. On November 21st, the World Health Organization declared that Zika was no longer a global public health emergency. However, the Ministry of Health said the Zika virus is still a public health concern here in Trinidad and Tobago, despite the WHO's stance. 
But Zika wasn't the only focus in the health sector. Who could forget the question of security measures across the nation's hospital? Yes, one lie by one medical intern about a robbery at the Port of Spain General Hospital raised questions about protection for staff at public hospitals. So much so that even the health minister went undercover. The guard is outside of the gate with the public. The gate, which is electronically controlled, is ajar. So what can happen? So anybody can get in. And... Anybody can get in. Why should a minister of health have to come to prove that the security services being provided are subpar? And the solution isn't more security. The solution is more responsible policing of the compound. 2016 saw a reduction in maternal deaths and the addition of 25 new ambulances to the public health care system. But the most interesting health appeal came from the Prime Minister as questions swirled about his own health. He used a post-cabinet briefing to call on men of this country to get tested for prostate cancer. He made a plea, in particular to men of African descent. He recalled a conversation he had with his friend. These particular diseases um, benefit from early detection. And even at that stage, he said to me, No! Nah, no man in digging up my bottom like that. And I couldn't believe it because it was a case of life and death. But he was so macho that he was not prepared to subject himself. But looking on to the new year, Carver says the Caribbean region should be even more wary of the mosquito bite in 2017 as a dengue type 3 epidemic is expected to hit. I am Marie Hall looking back at the impact of 2016 in health.